In this task, you'll learn how to accurately digitize the parcels off the georeferenced image into the parcel shapefile you created in task one. So I'm here in QGIS desktop and I've got the georeferenced image loaded. I have zoomed into it so I can see the parcels well. And I've also got the parcels layer, which currently is empty and has no features in it. So to start editing, I'll right click on this parcels layer and choose toggle editing. And you'll see as soon as I go into edit mode, a little pencil icon appears next to the layer indicating it's in edit mode. I also want to make sure my digitizing toolbar is available. And I can see it right up here. It became active when I went into edit mode. If you don't see this toolbar, simply go to the view menu down to toolbars and check the digitizing toolbar. And toolbars like panels can be docked anywhere in the GUI that you'd like. So you can dock it wherever is convenient. Polygons are constructed of a series of nodes which define their shape. To start, I'll click the Add Feature tool, which is this one right here. And I'll start digitizing around the perimeter of a polygon. And I'll be doing this with left mouse clicks. When I'm ready to close that polygon and finish it, I'll right click to complete. So I'll be digitizing this SU1 polygon down here. I'll start in this northwest corner. And I'm just entering left mouse clicks for every vertex that I want to add as I trace the parcel. And for this video, I'm doing this rather quickly. I probably would take a little more care if I was doing it um, for real. This is the, the final point I'm going to enter, so I'm going to right mouse click to finish the parcel. When I do that, this feature attributes window opens asking me to enter the two attributes that I have for this layer. I'm going to enter an ID of zero and the zone code is SU1. I'll click OK and we see the polygon appear. If I want to delete this, if I've made a mistake, I can click this current edits drop down and just roll back for the selected layer and it'll undo that edit. I can also use the select tool, select that feature and just delete it when I'm in edit mode. So I have a few options there for um, undoing mistakes that you make. If I want to edit an individual vertex, if you notice down here I didn't quite get the edge spot on, I can use the select tool to select this polygon. Then I can use this node tool, select that vertex, and slide it back into its proper place. Click the node tool again to get out of that. I'll unselect that layer and I'll zoom to the previous extent. So it is always possible to correct mistakes as you go. I'm going to pan back to the full extent of the georeferenced image. So adding a single isolated polygon is pretty straightforward. Next I'm going to make the parcel layer semi-transparent so that I can see the image underneath. This can be a valuable cartographic technique as well. So I'm going to double click on the parcels layer to open the layer properties. And on the style tab, I'm going to slide the layer transparency slider up somewhere between 40-50%, somewhere in that neighborhood. So that allows me to see the georeferenced image through the parcel layer. So let's focus on perhaps one of the trickier aspects of digitizing this group of parcels, the SU with the, the O1 parcel in the middle. The way I'll handle this is I'll first digitize the SU1 boundary, ignoring the O1 parcel for the moment. So I'm going to use the Add Feature tool and start digitizing the boundary of this larger outer polygon. I'll enter an ID of 1 and a zone code of SU1. And click OK. To finish SU1, I'm going to use a tool on the Advanced Editing Toolbar. To turn this on, I'm going to go to the View menu, down to Toolbars, and turn on Advanced Digitizing. And the toolbar docks right here. To finish the SU1 ring, I'm going to use this Add Ring tool on the Advanced Toolbar, and I'll digitize the boundary of O-1. 
So I'm using left mouse clicks to trace the perimeter of O-1. And right click to finish. This completes the SU-1 ring polygon. Now to digitize O-1, I'll use a tool that's part of the Digitizing Tools plugin. So first I'm going to go to the Plugins menu to Manage and Install Plugins. And under All, I'm going to search for Digitizing. Found the Digitizing Tools plugin, and I'm going to choose Install Plugin. This one is not installed, but you'll see that installing plugins is very straightforward. You just select the one you're interested in, choose Install, and QDIS will install that for you automatically. Now if I switch to my Installed tab, I'll see the Digitizing Tools tool is enabled. So now that that's enabled, I'll click Close. And the toolbar for this Digitizing plugin was placed right here. So I have my Digitizing Toolbar, the Advanced Digitizing Toolbar, and then the toolbar for the Digitizing plugin. So a lot of tools now we've added to for editing. So what I'm going to do is select this SU-1 ring polygon. So I'm going to use this tool here, the Fill Ring with a New Feature, Interactive Mode. I'm going to click the drop-down and choose Fill All Rings in Selected Polygons with New Features. Since I've selected the polygon I want to fill, it will fill that when I click this. So it's, it's all, I actually already done this, and it's just going to ask me for the attributes. So this is going to be ID2, and the zone code is... O-1. I'll click OK and it's automatically filled that polygon. I'm going to unselect the original SU-1 polygon and I'll use the identify tool just to demonstrate that this actually worked. So this one is SU-1, the inner one is O-1. So we've digitized this correctly. And finally I'll demonstrate how to work with a shared boundary. So first I'm going to set my snapping options. I'm going to go to the settings menu to snapping options. The snapping options is a window that lets you configure what layers you can snap to while editing and set the snapping tolerance. So the snapping mode lets you control what portions of a feature are being snapped to. There's a drop down. I can set the snapping mode to the current layer or I can choose advanced. I'm going to choose advanced in this case. The snapping options dialog now shows a list of map layers and options. And I'm just going to leave parcels checked, so we'll just be snapping to parcels. I want the mode to be two vertex, and I'm going to set the tolerance to 50 map units. Since the coordinate system of our data is state plane, the units are in feet. So this map units will be a snapping tolerance of 50 feet. So if I get within 50 feet in real world units of a vertex, it'll snap to it. I'm also going to check the box avoid intersections. And I'm going to enable topological editing. And I'll click OK. With these settings, when I digitize a shared boundary, I can begin at one of the vertices at one end of the shared boundary, continue digitizing the outer boundary of the new polygon, and end at a vertex at the other end of the shared boundary. And the shared boundary will be created automatically, eliminating digitizing errors. So for example, let's do R-1 here, which shares a boundary with SU-1, which I've already digitized. So I'll go back up to the original digitizing toolbar and use the Add Feature tool. And you can see now when I move within 50 map units of one of these vertices, it gets highlighted. I'm snapping to it. So I'm going to start here at this corner of the shared boundary between these two parcels. I'll left click to digitize the boundary. And I'm going to end right here. You can see it's snapping again to that vertex and I'm going to right click. It's asking for the attributes. This will be ID3 and the zone code is R1. And it's created that shared boundary for us automatically. This is a pretty straight shared boundary, but if you have shared boundaries that have curves or other complicated shapes, instead of trying to match that shared boundary, this will do it automatically for you and makes it much more precise and quicker to do. So you'll complete the digitizing job creating parcel polygons for each one of these parcels. And in the next task, you'll learn how to modify existing shapefiles.